you. Good evening, everybody. Thank you. Good evening and welcome to this evening's meeting of the South of the Borough Committee here at Chessington Methodist Church Hall. A particular warm welcome to those members of the public with us tonight and to those watching on the meeting online. My name is Councillor Lorraine Dunstone and I will be chairing the meeting this evening. In the event of an emergency and the sounding of an alarm, which we're not expecting, the emergency evacuation procedure is to leave by the nearest exit. Anyone requiring assistance should remain in their seats and an officer will assist you from the building. Whilst restrictions have eased, I would ask everybody present to be mindful of close proximity to each other. It is recommended that a face covering is used. However, unless every, anyone indicates that they would like everyone to, I will leave that to the individual discretion. So we're on okay. Anybody in the public gallery or watching at home who wishes to follow the agenda from their tablet or smartphone can do so by going to www.kingston.gov.uk and follow the links from your council on the home page. This meeting is being filmed for live, um, for live broadcast. I say that loosely because the Wi-Fi is hit and miss and it may be that it goes on to the website tomorrow morning. Um, um, and an archived version will be available to view on the channel after the meeting finishes. The broadcast will be suspended during any adjournments in proceedings and if the committee resolves to consider information as exempt business. Members are reminded that microphones must be switched on and spoken into clearly for, for the broadcast. And if I can also remind everyone if you're speaking, into, speaking on the microphones, if you can speak directly into the microphones, um, because as soon as you move your head away, it's uh, difficult for some people to hear. Please, can everyone present in the meeting also ensure that their mobile phones are switched off or in silent mode for the duration of this meeting? I will start by introducing the members of the committee. If I start with Councillor Thailand and then we'll move around, if you can introduce yourselves, that would be lovely, thank you. Yeah, well, my name is uh, Ty Thailand. I'm the councillor for Tolworth and Who Cries for I'm the vice chair of the committee as well. Thank you. Andrew McKinley, uh, councillor for Chesterton South and Malden Russia. Hi, good evening. Andreas Kirsch, Councillor for Chessington South and Modern Russia. Good evening. I'm Councillor Christine Stewart for Chessington South and Modern Russia. Steph. Hello, I'm Councillor Steph Archer, Councillor for Chessington North and Hook. Good evening, Councillor Margaret Thompson, Chessington North and Hook. Hello, Councillor Sharon Young, Chesington North and Hook. Good evening, Dennis Goodship, Councillor for Tulworth and Hook Rise. Thank you, colleagues. We also have officers present um, who will be presenting uh, reports this evening. Going to item two, um, we now turn to a period of no more than 30 minutes during which any resident of the borough or representative of organisations operating within the borough other than members of the council, may ask questions on matters relevant to the committee. We like to encourage direct questions to be submitted in advance so that officers have an opportunity to answer them, although it's not absolutely necessary. I understand we've received a question from Mr. Robb regarding Kingstonians Football Club um, and also Liz Mitchell, Alex Oakes, Simon Laycock representing residents from Thornhill Road who have a series of questions regarding the Tolworth Road LTN. If I can ask Mr. Rob to come forward, thank you. Am I on? Yes? Yeah. Um, Happy New Year to you all, first of all. Um, please could the committee tell us of any negotiations or talks that have been possibly taking place or in the process of taking place between our council and Kingstonians Football Club? If there is, is negotiations going on, who from the council is talking to Kingstonians? We appreciate that they are temporarily moving to Mitcham, but seem to have been told a permanent home will be found for them in the borough. In this, in this case, ha has this commitment been made? One of the rumours is that the land adjacent to the Lovelace School may be offered. We would hope that before any commitment is made by the council, 
A full consultation exercise will take place with residents of the south of the borough. Thank you, Mr. Rob. I'll pass it over to um, Richard, a neighbourhood manager, who's got um, an update from the council. Thank you very much, and thanks for the question, Mr. Rob. Um, you are quite right. Everything's done with consultation. So I can say that um, the council are in very early stages of discussions with Kingstonian on potential options for suitable sites. Um, no commitment, this is a really important bit, no commitment or decisions have been made. If and when any proposal moves forward, it'll be subject to the usual robust decision-making and planning processes, which include public consultation. Thanks very much. Thank you. I also just have a, a response, sorry, just to, to yeah. clarify, I think, um, from the portfolio holder of leisure, which is Councillor John Sweeney, who's asked me to read out a statement. Um, on October the 11th, Kingstonian FC, a 100-year-old football club with long history in the borough, on my instruction as the portfolio holder for leisure, wrote to Iona Liddington, Liddington requesting some assistance in finding a new home within the borough. Their aspirations include both running a successful non-league football team and community work with youth teams and under-18 boys and girls. Whilst this is, a very this is a very challenging task for officers from sports development and assets have met with KFC directors in October to understand how RBA, RBK might be able to help. Discussions with Kingstonians Football Club in respect to seeking to relocate them back into the borough that bears their name at, are at a very early stage. They currently share a ground with Corinthian Casuals, or now moved over to um, uh, Tooting and Mitcham FC. They have requested the opportunity to pursue the possibility of taking a lease of the former Lovelace playing fields um, to be available for community use. This is one of the few sites discussed. Local councillors are aware of this interest but have not met or discussed this matter with anyone from KFC. Some RBK councillors have visited the site recently with officers um, and myself, John Sweeney. Uh, this visit highlighted that there are many challenges to overcome to return this site to a sports and recreational area. There are some, these are some of the issues. Um, the site is a green belt site. Um, there are flooding and draining ish issues. Vehicular access and parking to the site is restricted. There is no parking in the local area. General traffic issues and lack of public transport and site feasibility. If anyone, including Kingstonian, wishes to develop sports facilities on this site, it would need to go through the fully transparent process of residence consultation, south of the borough neighbourhood, strategic committee and planning committees, just as any other application would. RBK has not made any comments to the sports club regarding the site. RPK is supportive of KFC's aspiration to re-establish a base in the borough. Thank you. Just a quick comment. I said we've, we've got our own football club, really. We've got uh, Chessington and Hook, so any, any facilities or any sort of impetus, should, we should put that into our own lo local. They haven't got a very re good reputation over the years. They, they started off in the middle of Kingston, and then they went to Kings, uh, Kingsmead, is it Kingsmead? And then that sold to like Chelsea. So they haven't done themselves any favours, really. And I don't see why we should be the full guys. And, and I think what we've just said there has made our case that probably it's the wrong place to go. You know. Thank you. You're very welcome, thank you. So, um, we'll go on to the um, next questions um, if, from Liz Mitchell, Alex Oakes, Simon Laycock. If you'd like to come forward, to bring some chairs forward. <coughs> I know you have a series of questions to yep. ask, um, some of which may be possible to be answered tonight but sure. we will make sure that if they're not if it can't be answered tonight they will be followed up in writing to right. you okay. okay thank you thank you everyone for having us um, this evening um, we uh, the three of us tonight um, represent Thornhill Road and we wanted to ask some questions about the Tolworth Road LTN which has been recently implemented and the impact that that's had on our street so, our first question is one from me at number 80 Thornhill Road. So, when will Council implement measures to reduce the impact of the Tolworth LT on N on Thornhill Road? Ian, are you able to answer? If not, we'll, we'll follow it up in writing. Ooh, apologies. Um, good evening. Um, I, I don't know whether you want to take them one at a time or, or whether 
you want to deal with them, read them all out, and I can deal with the ones that I can deal with? Or Because I'm not going to be able to respond to all of them tonight because I've, I've literally yeah. had these questions this afternoon. Um, what I have also got is um, a short paper that I was bringing to this committee anyway, which was a status update on the Tolworth Road, um, sort of like low traffic measure, which has got some background in it. It's got some information around how we got to where we've got and what the next steps are going to be in terms of data collection, traffic monitoring, that sort of stuff, which I'm happy through the chair to, to share um, with you. Um, that, but, would be, that would be very helpful if we could um, hear that. But I, I would like to um, read out our questions because I think they indicate the uh, extent of our questions. Okay, our so, if we, so if I can suggest, if you read, read them through, mm -hmm. and then um, if um, then Ian can come back with any that he has answers for, and we'll come back in writing with the rest. To, to the rest right? of the questions. Okay. Yep, that, thank yep, you. Thank you. So, sorry, Mr. Rob, I can't hear. Sorry, thank you. Um, okay, so Alex at 176. Um, says, what kind of traffic is acceptable to council for a residential area? Neil at number 41 says, council and pollution monitors, council said that pollution monitors would be installed as part of the review of the Tolworth Road LTN. When are they going to be installed on Thornhill Road and where? Chris at number 37 says, what are the interim measures to be put in place now, given one, council knew there would be an impact, and two, it is likely going to take well over a year to review the current situation, identify long-term measures, arrange funding, consultation, by the way, we weren't consulted, we were told, and then implemented. Judith at 163. When did the council inform residents of this anticipated increase to traffic, as identified in the A243 Healthy Street Reports, point 7B, and offer any support measures to address the road safety and pollution levels in this vicinity. Molly, number 36. When is the meeting between councillors, highway officers and residents to discuss our concerns going to be held? George at 84. How will the two neighbourhood committees, because we conveniently straddle two wards, how will the two neighbourhood committees work together to resolve the issue of increased traffic and pollution on our street? Fiona at number 82. What further evidence, other than that which we have supplied through our traffic counts, our videos and our own monitoring, do you need to confirm that Tolworth Road LTN has failed the aims of an LTN? Darren at number 22. We want an LTN for Thornhill Road. We support LTNs. What do we need to do to facilitate that happening for our street and the neighbourhood? Because that's what an LTN stands for, low traffic neighbourhood, not a street. Vivian at 132. Can you please make public the consultation exercises carried out prior to the work being carried out on, Thor on Tolworth Road? Nico at number 27. What assistance can residents be to petitioning TFL to make changes to the A3 junction at Fuller's Road North? We are seeking to help where we can. Rob at 183. Were the two high schools that sit at e that their children use the bus stops at either end of Thornhill Road en masse, were those two high schools consulted prior to the changes to Tolworth Road, as this change has affected the students who use these streets and whose bus stops they use and are the closest to, that, to those schools. Lewis at 86, did the council take any baseline traffic measurement studies on our road to record average vehicle movements before they closed off Tolworth Road? And when will they 
do the same to consider the variance. We have done our own studies and we estimate the traffic has increased anywhere between 30% and 50%. Possibly. Possibly more. Mm. Monica at 183. We are preparing a report for the Neighbourhood Committee, so for this committee and the Surbiton Hill one, um, with evidence of the impact that this has had on our street. How do we get this report on the agenda for the February meetings of these committees? We want our results and our concerns on the public record. Nick at 181. The A243 Healthy Street report said residents and community groups were consulted in the preparation of that report. Can you please share the comments from that consultation? Because no one on our whole street has said they were part of that consultation. Steve at number 112. What has been the feedback from the open end of Tolworth Road, Fuller's Avenue and Thornhill Avenue. And how does this compare with the feedback from Thornhill Road? Are the interests of the minority outweighing the interests of the majority in this particular case? Is this consistent with a democratic society? Thank you. Thank you very much. Ian, can you come back on any of that? Yeah, thank you. Just finding my place on the page again. <clears throat> so um, I think for me. Um, sorry, can you ask? Can you introduce yourself? So I don't. I don't know. Yeah, yeah, certainly. Yeah, yeah, certainly. So my name's um, Ian Price. Um, my job role is team leader for strategy and commissioning. So I've got um, engineers, senior engineers in my team who who are, are running this project. Um, and it's part of a, a wider program for the, the LIP program that we look after as well. That's, that's my name and my role. Right. Thank um, you. So in terms of the points that um, I can probably give you some feedback on, um, in terms of um, what we're doing in, in, in the short term, so when the schemes were approved some time ago, obviously back in um, January 2020, COVID had an impact in terms of funding, which meant the schemes weren't delivered when we anticipated they would be delivered. Um, when it looked like funding was coming back online, the position around this scheme was revisited with councillors from this committee and the Surbiton Neighbourhood Committee prior to any next steps being taken. Um, <clears throat> at that time, it was agreed the Tolworth Road element would go ahead. Um, the, the other element in Thornhill, um, Thornhill Road, there were concerns about the displacement of traffic that that would cause, and hence the decision was taken at that time not to put that in immediately, um, but to put the Tolworth Road in, monitor the traffic flows, and then see what mitigation might be appropriate at a later stage. Because it's an experimental traffic order, um, what we normally have is the first six, up to the first six months, um, is, if you like, the consultation period, where we will put it in, monitor the traffic, open the consultation online. So there's, we've got the, the Let's Talk portal, um, which is an online mechanism where residents can go, put all their responses on it, and I would encourage you to get everybody to, to take part in that so that we can see the, the feedback. We've already got a lot of feedback at this early stage. Um, <clears throat> and what we, um, what we agreed right from the outset was that once the scheme whatever form it took was, was in place, that we would have regular um, monitoring meetings with both Kingston, not Kingston, apologies, uh, south of the borough and Surbiton neighbourhood committees. So, so those monthly meetings are programmed. We've got one at the end of January. There'll be one at the end of February, March, April, however long um, this, this process goes on for. Um, and at those meetings, what we will be doing is revisiting the traffic data that we've collected, the, 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 the sort of like the comments that we're receiving, um, so all the information that you've been sharing with us, we'll be running through that with them at the meeting, so that they've got... Are all... we invited to those meetings? No, it's just a, an officer and a member meeting at this stage. Um, so so that, um, that will be the monthly meetings 
um, where we'll be sort of like giving them all the information that they need to consider. You don't it. have any data at so, the moment. So what we have got um, at the moment, there was a question here that asked that. that so we've done the before yep. traffic data collection, which was in November yep. 2021. Um, and there, that was a number of locations across the area. Yep. And I can provide you with a plan, if you'd like, that, that can show the roads that were included. Yes, um, just, just so you know what they are. Um, we will repeat that, as I said, towards the end of January, towards the end of February as well, so that we've got some, um, some, some data that will show us what the difference in traffic flows has been. Can I just ask, um, so I've asked this actually quite a few times in councillors, but it's never been clear to us what level of traffic increase on our roads you guys will accept as a reason to carry on. Yeah, I'm really sorry. You're going to have to ask the question through oh, the sorry. microphone because otherwise it won't get picked up on the recording. Thank you. Um, sorry. So, yeah, my question is basically um, you have mentioned that you're installing counters to measure the displacement of traffic on our road. But I've asked the question a number of times, like what level of increase do you deem acceptable to carry on with the scheme or make alterations? And I've never received a response to that. So it'd be good to know at what threshold you think is acceptable and what you don't think is acceptable? Yeah, I, I can definitely look into that. I don't have that information with me, so, and I'm, I'm not going to make any suggestions as to what that might be. Um, there will be guidance. I think TfL have provided some guidance on um, low traffic neighbourhood analysis, um, and, and so I'm sure we can find some, some, some data from, from that source to give you some, some feedback on, on what that should be, um, or, yes, or what in the range of what that should be. Um, just a, another point I did want to clarify um, around the air quality, in fact, in the monitoring stations. So what we um, have actually committed to doing is air quality modelling rather than having air quality um, diffusers put in place. So what we do, and we've done this on all of the low traffic schemes that we've had in, in the borough so far. So we get um, an air quality specialist um, team they take all of our traffic data and they model the impacts in terms of the changes in the traffic flows to work out what the, the, the change in the particulates is in, based on the sort of like the traffic flows. It's not purely based on traffic flows, it takes other things into account as well, like the, the width of the street, how, how close the buildings are to, to the sort of like to the, the, the pavement line and things like that, because that all has an impact on how quickly um, the, the, the pollution in the air dissipates and how quickly it, 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 it sort of like spreads it and, and passes away. So, so that's what we will be doing. So all the data that we've got to date and the, the January and the February data that we collect, all of that will be sent to the air quality monitoring team and they will provide us with um, a report that sets out, if you like, what the, the baseline data from November is and what the, the changes are subsequent to that. Um, and that would... Um, usually be presented as a part of, if you like, our end of consultation report that would go to both Surbiton and South of the Borough Neighbourhood Committees. And usually we do that after the six month period. Um, I'm not suggesting that we have to do that every time, but that's what we normally do. That's when, when you say six months, that scares the living daylights out of me. What are you going to do about It's obvious. Can now. we just keep to the, the actual questions that we've answered and then we'll yeah. come back with any other... Uh, I mean, it is a six-month experimental order, traffic management order. We, you know, if, if the data comes back that it, that's not fitting, then we, will, we have those discussions and those parameters in place to have monthly meetings to work out how we can move it forward. So I think, um, you know, that's... I think that's, that, that's where we are at the moment. Is there anything else you wanted to answer on those list of questions? Ian? Yeah, the, the only other point I just wanted to touch on was the um, question 11 about the A3. Um, so we have actually asked the question of TfL before uh, about closing um, the A3 and, and Fuller's Way North Junction. Um, they didn't actually provide us with a response at the time. Um, we have followed that up. It was quite timely that I had a meeting uh, this afternoon with my colleagues at TfL, and I said, we need a response to the question. You know, even if you're going to dismiss it out of hand, I need to understand why, um, on, on what basis, so that we've actually got a, a response to the question. Um, so, so they have agreed to go away and consider that and come back to us. Um, the other information that we are pressing TfL to get some feedback on is from the bus operators. So 
as, as you'll know, the, the, the bus operates uh, along Thornhill and, and Red Lion Road. So we're keen to understand from them what the delays to their journeys might have been, what congestion, what conflict they might have experienced as well. So we're, we're um, awaiting feedback on that as well. So that was just on those questions. Can I add the, um, the buses? They're all diesels. There are no electric buses. There are 180, on average, bus journeys down our street every day. And between 75 and 80% of buses that stop, they do not turn off their engines. Thank you. Um, Richard, I think you were um, going to talk about, um, come back about the meeting. I know one of the questions was about arranging a meeting that you kindly um, put forward. Thank you. Yes, thank you, Chair. Um, my name's Richard Dean. I'm the neighbourhood manager for, for South of the Borough, where we are at the moment, obviously. Um, my colleague, uh, James Geach, and I have discussed um, where and why um, locations that we could have a public meeting, as you understand. As you say yourself, really, it's across two neighbourhoods, so it's, uh, it's not as easy as it can. And, and also, we need to link in with colleagues from highways and the, the chain of command within the highways. But I, I certainly don't want you to think that your request for a, a public meeting or any other meeting has been um, set to one side or anything like that. It's just that we need to get the right mechanisms in place to, to work alongside and not interfere with any consultation. And um, we will keep, I will keep you informed of the progress of that personally. So, just. All right, thank you. I'm not aware of any consultation process other than filling out a form on a website. I thought consultation was a two-way... Well, exactly, but I'd say it's, it's running alongside the consultation that's there under the Let's Talk portal <coughs> in which everybody is entitled to put their views for and against, obviously, the low-traffic neighbourhood. So I don't want to do anything that's going to interfere with that, James and I, which is why we're, we're looking at the best options, the best locations and the best times that it can be held if colleagues agree it's the right way forward. So. Thank you, yes, Richard. Um, can I just add one yeah. final point? Was that like you're citing? <clears throat> it's probably more of a statement rather than a question. But you're citing a low traffic neighbourhood, but all you have created is one low traffic street, and all of the area is is sort of feeling the effect of that. So I just don't understand how it's fair that we have to put up with cars and buses and all sorts of danger to our properties and our families for months and months and months while you carry on with a scheme that is very clear that is having a catastrophic impact already. Which well, road is that? Thornhill Road. That, that's the nice bit where, where I can say I have to hand back to a, a highways expert in here because my role is as a neighbourhood manager is just facil facilitate means part of the process. I am not and would never seek to be a highways expert. So we take your comments on board and, and we'll get back to you with those, I think. Thank you. Thank you very much for coming along this evening. We really appreciate it. And we'll get the answers for you in writing. And we've got um, some information that we can give you that Ian was going to uh, provide as well. So we've got a copy of that for you. As, um, if that's, uh, can we take that now, uh, can we? Yes, absolutely. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, everybody. Thank you. Are there any other questions um, this evening? Okay, well, in that case, then we'll move on um, to item three. Apologies for absence. Um, we don't have any apologies this evening. Thank you, Fiona. Um, item four, declarations of interest. Do any members have any interest they wish to declare? No? Thank you very much. Um, petitions. Um, we have no petitions to be submitted this evening. I'll then go on to item six, the minutes. Um, minutes of meetings held on 2nd of September and 16th of November. Um, I, can I, um, is these agreed as a correct record? Yep, thank you very much. With members' agreement, I will bring forward one of the urgent items on the agenda that's been uh, put on uh, yesterday, and that's regarding the community grants programme. Is everyone ag agreeable to that, to bring that forward earlier on? Thank you. Um, so, um, we've got the, yeah, the Community Grants Neighbourhood Seal Funding. Um, Dave, is it Dave? Ben is, Ben is going to come forward. Sorry, Ben. Um, sorry? David, sorry. Now, that's going to confuse me now. Thank you. <laughs> I don't know why. I don't know if you'd prefer to sit there or there. Um, and this is an application for seal funding to support the installation of a circular footpath at Woodview, as set out in the report. And I'll now pass over to David to introduce the report. Thank you. 
And on? Yeah, perfect. Hi, good evening, everyone. Thank you for having me this evening. Uh, just to introduce myself, I'm Dave Mason, Green Spaces Project Officer for RBK. Well, I work on the Community Parks Program um, along with um, Rob White and Colin Stewart regarding infrastructure within our parks, open spaces. So application I've got for tonight is regarding um, a pathway which has been identified by the Friends of Woodview. Um, this project's been, I would say it's about, about six to nine months within the making and it was identified where the current Friends, uh, chairman of the Friends group there had carried out a survey to local residents for that part of the borough, the village community there. And obviously, as some of you might know regarding some of the playground projects which we've had going on within the borough as well, Woodview is next, uh, where in the coming months that will get uh, completely re uh, generate re-install um, of new playground equipment and as part of that program we would like to see um, the inclusion of the pathway where um, again the major benefit which has been identified with that is where we would like to have a perimeter pathway for people for keeping fit so it'd be for jogging especially with youngsters um, cycling uh, having it as a cycling scheme was identified as one of the main uh, reasons regarding the pathway as well uh, for some of the local um, schools and it gives opportunities for um, the residents with any disabilities as well wheelchair users and um, uh, community groups with that which was identified on the survey with that as well and also as part of the redevelopment it's um, something which we've identified where it would give the further health and fitness opportunities as well because as part of the program which we have with the uh, playground there there'll be the installation of some new gym equipment as well so um, we've noticed obviously over the last couple of months it's been um, a massive thing where obviously Local residents have been able to identify with their local parks, which they might have not known, obviously due with COVID. And again, the, the demand has increased massively for that. But I'd like to think that as part of this project for the pathway as well, it will be something where, um, again, it will go very nicely with the overall uh, scheme and project where there's a little woodland area there, which again, the friends are looking to identify where we're looking at with, um, the environmental impact with that as well and looking to change the area into some green open spaces as well working with our biodiversity officer as well um, just a little bit about the pathway the, the pathway is to be um, two meters in width a tarmac with concrete edging so the good thing about that kind of pathways it will last for as we know for quite a period of time as well and um, also which we might be looking at to see is whether with the pathway we could put that on an educational point of view to look at some line markings such as give way some educational panels again with that so again having that real educational impact for the young users there for the site as well um, and yeah I'd be more than happy to take any questions regarding the project thank you David and um, did you want to add anything to it Richard at all? Only as a chance to get the mask off, Mayor um, Chair, obviously. Um, just to say that obviously as, um, uh, as part of the process, I have to go through the uh, NSIL officer and make sure that the project is uh, compliant with all the NSIL regulations. Uh, and I'm very happy to say that that is the case. Thank you very much. Thank you. Um, does the committee have any questions at all of David? No, sir. Certainly, Andrew. Yep, Councillor McKinley. Well, I'd like to thank Mr. Mason and his colleagues and a gentleman who's not here tonight, Ben Sayer, who's a friend of Woodview Group. They put a lot of time and energy into this project, and I think it's very exciting. And it's much appreciated in Malden, Russia. I think that um, just to this lovely path we're referring to, I think one of the things in the mind's eye is that particularly little children, you know, when they get their first um, bike with two supporting wheels, they can literally go round and, and, and get confidence here. They don't have to go up and down, they can go round and round and incorporating things like zebra crossings and what other things Mr Mason's referred to, so it's got it very much in mind. The other thing is it, it, it is um, an area which would lend itself to the swift 
picnic, as it were, uh, for people in modern Russia and elsewhere. You know, uh, it's an area where occasionally a person could go down and have some sandwiches and refreshment, perhaps um, all age groups. And uh, of course, there's a good vista. If you look at the, the picture, the photograph in the bundle of papers, the s south part of the uh, Woodview area is open land. And uh, although I'm not an ornithologist, it's, it's not a bad place to look at the sort of bird of prey circling above. And uh, Mr. Mason's also referred to the adjoining on the, on the eastern side, uh, a woodland area, which connects into uh, some of the estate um, close to the A243. And, and that can be used. It, there's a public access through that wood, which is very welcome. So uh, I, I'm very keen and appreciative of what they've done, and, and this project would be, as I say, much appreciated. The, the final thing is, just people who are looking at the picture, uh, th there is actually a mound there, which again is fun for kids and attractive. And I, I think, Mr. Mason, that will continue to incorporate a slide, won't it? The, the mound. Uh, yes. Yeah. Um, currently, there. Uh, I don't know for anyone who has visited the site. There's a current embankment slide there, and part of the um, works to be carried out. There'll be a new embankment slide. There'll be um, binoculars, which will be actual use where it's not just put your eyes through they'll have <laughs> you have the capability of looking afar as well and also there'll be refurbishment of the current steps leading up the mound for more health and safety aspect as well so it's enjoyable for its users as well yeah thank you very much thank, thank you thank you councillor stewart david you'll be pleased to hear i'm not actually asking a question but i'm following councillor mckinley's um <laughs> way of just commenting on it, I'd like to say that both Churchfields and RAF Park have really benefited from their parks around, and I think it's brilliant that this is going to be extended down at Woodview. So during COVID in particular, it really improved people's mental well-being, where they could actually walk in wide open spaces without getting totally muddy and up to the necks in mud. So thanks ever so much for all your hard work. We really appreciate Thank it. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor Cash. Thank you, Chair, and uh, thank you, David Ford of the Board and for the uh, work on this. And yeah, I just can follow uh, Councillor McKinley and Councillor Stewart uh, and what Councillor Stewart said. I fully agree with the IF Park and George Fields. The, 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 the difference, the improvements have made, and the footpath is there. It's just amazing and lovely to see how many more people using it and uh, how beneficial it has been to residents and the uptake there. Yeah, so I really are pleased that we are in a position to that, that still money could be secured in order to make the improvement of the um, playground even more holistic in a, a really nice way to round the whole project up and make the most out of it. And I'm really looking forward to seeing it done. That's if we obviously approve it. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Anyone else? Steph, did you want to come in? Yeah, I guess just... Yeah, really great. I feel like Woodview is kind of the final piece in the jigsaw, <laughs> unless I'm missing something. Um, yeah, I know quite a few, got quite a few friends who live down there, and they're really pleased that it's all getting done. And this is just, yeah, kind of icing on the cake. So thanks for your work on yeah, this. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, Councillor Young. Thank you, Chair. Um, final comment, just to echo all the other comments. The perimeter paths are great, and I'm so pleased that we are finally using our SIL funding to really do some local projects um, and make a real difference, so that's great. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, if there's nothing else, I'll... Um, uh, if, so can we agree on this neighbourhood SIL application for £24,576? I'll move this from the Chair. Do I have a seconder for that, please? Yeah, Councillor Stewart. Um, so, um, can I? So, yes. Yeah, sorry, moved from the chair. I uh, lost my space. Um, so, can I take the agreement for this grant application as being unanimous? Agreed. Yeah. Lovely. Thank you very much. And again, please pass on our thanks to, to everyone, yourself included, for all the hard work with all the, um, the playground, sports the, and everything else that's going on. It's just right. wonderful to see um, and really pleased that Woodview will um, have the improvements as right. well. So thank you very much. Right.
Pleasure. Thank you very much for your time. And I just thought before I go, just give some sort of time scale, because I know that's probably one question which should be quite interesting to know. It will be hoped that actually the pathway will be carried out prior to the main playground works. So hopefully end of February, beginning of March, mm -hmm. we should have hopefully with the installation, depending on our contractors, just to give you that timeline. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, so we'll go on to item six on the agenda, Appendix A, Buckland Road School Street for Castle Hill Primary School. Um, so um, I think I'm gonna pass this over to, um, to Patrick, who has joined us this evening. Thank you very much. Um, and if you want to, um, to go forward with the report and the introduction that would be lovely thank you yeah good evening everybody uh, i'm patrick long um sustainable transport officer um, and i project manage the school streets across kingston so um i'd like the committee to resolve that we make permanent the scheme the experimental traffic management order that we've got at buckland road for um, castle hill primary school um, to make make it permanent um, also to change the timings a little bit um, because they were initially put in to, to, um, to feedback what was happening through COVID and the, the, the timings that the children were coming in and out of school. Um, unfortunately, um, we haven't had a camera at that location for the whole of the experimental traffic management order, but through the, um, through the beginning, we were seeing very good um, um, we're seeing sort of good take up of people parking away from the Buckland Road itself um, and using um, sort of more sustainable, sustainable modes like walking, etc. Um, we are having um, sort of issues with installing the camera um, at the moment. Um, we have tried installing the camera using the current CCTV pole at North Parade, um, spent a lot of time backwards and forwards trying to sort that out, um, but s steps are, uh, are finally moving forward to, to get something in place as long as um, we can resolve that we put the scheme in permanently. Obviously, there's not really much point putting in the camera now um, if we don't make it permanent. Um, it would be a big shame if we took it out. There's um, a lot of residents in that area, um, especially around the back, who, who have complained about um, the parent parking for a long time, a long time, <laughs> um, and it, you know, it's it's something that is not specific to this school, but it's quite a it's quite a good location to have a school street because it is a dead end and there's a roundabout, etc. And we can close off the road. Um, so I think that's about it, all I have to say. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, I just had a couple of questions on the report, if I may, before I mm. go to, to colleagues. Um, so um, on um, page A8, uh, you mentioned that the lamp col column currently also has hanging baskets as well as a commando socket currently being used for Christmas lights. We don't have Christmas lights down there, much to our frustration. There's never oh. Christmas lights down there. So um, we'd, we'd love there to be. So if there are any that you can see that we want to need to put up, we'll put them up. But currently there's no Christmas lights there. Um, and I'm hoping you're working with Richard Dean and not James Geach on this, because that's what the report mentions. Um, and that, um, yeah, you were hoping to have a better plan um, by today, but obviously we've not got as far as that, so um, that's fine. Uh, did colleagues have any questions at all? No? Okay. Oh, right, okay, sorry. Um, yeah, Councillor Archer, then Councillor Thompson. Yes, great, so it's good to hear that compliance has been good. Um, also, could you just give us an idea of kind of the support for the scheme? Um, what kind of feedback have you been getting from residents and from the school? Yeah, so from the school, um, we obviously have um, quite a good relationship with them. Um, they've been working well with us. They're very supportive of the scheme, but because we haven't had the camera in place, there's obviously been contraventions happening and people st are still driving in. 
um, which is obviously a road safety issue because um, the whole idea is for road safety as well as air quality but um, the school have flagged up this issue um, and if they say that if we have a camera they'd be fully supportive of it um, talking to residents um, in the area they, they'd be fully supportive of it as well um, obviously it's making a massive massive difference um, when we initially did the um, the emergency traffic management order where we had the, a proper closure you know you, you, you saw what effect that was having and it was much better and from that the residents were we're all very supportive of that style of scheme. Obviously putting in a camera in, there's extra costs and um, without that and without a physical block, we were getting cars coming through. So um, I think if we can get the camera in place with the traffic management order and, and put it in permanently, the, the whole of the community in that area should be fully supportive. Thank you. I'd just like to say that um, up until uh, this, this scheme started, as Patrick will notice, because we have spent a lot of time standing together on the corner of Buckland Road, I was getting phone calls several times a week from really angry, distressed, distraught residents because of the parking situation down there and cars parked on their front gardens because at the back the gardens don't have any fences. They were literally parked on their, their grass areas. Um, the risks to the children and so on. And since this has been in place, I've had one phone call, and that's all, which is incredible. You know, it's a real change. And I have walked down there myself a couple of times just to see what's happening, and it is transformed, even without the camera. So I just want to say thank you. This is clearly a massive success in terms of our children's safety and well-being. I would just like to answer, has there been much knock-on um, parking along Moor Lane and the North Parade. I haven't actually seen that particularly. Um, sorry. So there hasn't been problems there. It doesn't, doesn't appear to. Whenever I've gone and visited and done personal counts and visited our lollipop man who's down there as well, um, I haven't seen too much knock-on effect. You know, I've done pre-counts and um, when the schemes counts was, was in and done counts there too. And I haven't seen a massive knock-on. It's always busy, particularly in the afternoon. Um, but I, w I wouldn't say it's, it's too busy. Can I come in on, on, on that, that section? Because one thing that did worry me, and I know, um, was that when I did go past in, when, um, during school time, is particularly... Um, where you have the parking on Moor Lane, um, that, that people double park and triple park along there. And I know that, that I've, in my mind I've got something about parking review. Is there something going on around North Parade itself to be looking at? Can, Steph, have you got anything you can mention on that? Thank you. Yeah, so it's something that has been brought to my attention. Obviously, as a local resident, I experience the fact that our local parades of shops um, don't have limitations or at least don't have limitations that are working in terms of parking. So we are looking at all of our um, parades of shops, particularly in Chesington, um, to, to see how we can sort of support local businesses and keep the kind of traffic flow moving, keeping parking moving so that businesses can have customers visit and can have deliveries, etc. Obviously, North Parade is going to be part of this. So, um, you know, as we do that review um, in the next months, we will, yeah, this and obviously the school street, you know, may well play into it. I mean, I, I personally haven't kind of heard, you know, anything, you know, that is particularly knocking on North Parade. Got, you, we've got to remember the fact that this is a very short time frame of closure and only in term time mm -hmm. so um, I wouldn't envision that it would have a huge effect but um, yeah something that we'll continue to monitor and be yeah, part of this review that we'll be doing as well for our parades of shops. Thank you. Um, Councillor Stewart. Yeah just one quick question. Um, I noticed that the two objections came to do with the children's centre and I noticed that you've changed your hours. What are the hours of the children's centre? Uh, Sorry, uh, do you mean for the closure or the 
working out of the... No, you've obviously adapted it, so that now it's shortened until 9 o'clock. Is that because the Children's Centre opens after 9 o'clock and closes possibly before 2.30? I, I just wanted to get the idea of the hours. No, we've shortened the, the hours um, from feedback from um, Castle Hill School. Um, they were they were particularly extended to do um, the the extended um, in and outs of the children um, in the mornings and the afternoons so during the COVID period. So since then, we've decided to reduce the hours. So in general, we usually have like an hour um, in the morning and an hour in the afternoon, um, and in some cases, we have up to an hour and a half. Um, some boroughs. Um, other boroughs in London have as little as half an hour. Um, it all depends on, you know, how how we see the traffic going in and out of the area, as well as um, what the school opening and closing times are, as well as consulting with them. Yes, I can see that, but I just want to know the specific hours of the Children's Centre. Do you have those? Uh, not on me. Okay, if you could let me have them. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Okay, are there any other questions at all? No comments? Okay, lovely. Thank you very much. Um, Council, uh, Mr. Rob, if you'd like to come forward. Um, yeah, firstly, it's, it's a point of information. I, I thought we bought eight sets of uh, CCTV cameras for school entrances, one being uh, put up in Ellingham, and they were supposed to be mobile and portable. Well, not portable, but they, they, they were actually able to move around. That's why we only bought eight sets of cameras. So I can't understand why you couldn't uh, maybe move the camera from somewhere else to actually try to do, do, do this. Also, Mervyn very kindly uh, said that the, the cameras at the ends of uh, the North Braid are actually functioning and working well. So I'm a bit worried that you can use the cameras. But my main point is that um, we just had the people here from um, Tolworth Road and... Um, um, Thornhill, and it, it does appear that with, with an action, there is always a re reaction, and I totally agree with the actual road and uh, it's, it's you know it's a school road and anything we do for children's safety, but totally agree, disagree. I use uh, North Parade a lot, and uh, there's real problems down there with parking, and this will exacerbate things. So we need as quick as possible to look at a scheme. To, for the parking, maybe um, free parking, but um, you know, parking f for one hour, something like they got the ACE, no, no, no charging or anything like that. Uh, maybe a one way system down North Parade so the parking bays can be angled so you can get more cars in there because at the moment you get people um, filling up two spaces because it's a free for all. And, and secondly, the, the more lane business, if you go from Sanger Avenue down to the Mini Roundabout, you can't go down there without having to stop for traffic coming the other way so that needs to be one way from Sanger Avenue down to the Mini Roundabout so you can't just look at this in isolation it's got to be a complete scheme and the sooner we look at it the better really thank you Thank you Mr Rob which is exactly why we're doing the, the, the parking review so um, that will be caught up in, in within that so thank you Councillor Stewart I do apologise Chair because you're line and vision and mine just don't work out. Um, Patrick, you won't be surprised. I only get a paper copy. Well, I actually could get the electronic, but I get a paper copy. So when it comes to qualities analysis, if there is a link there, I don't have the qualities impact assessment. And I would quite like it downloaded, if you don't mind. I can forward Because I would you. like to see the details. Yeah. Apologies, that should have been appendix sized if that's a word thank you okay can i just um yes. respond to mr rob yeah. um so the the camera that um mervyn had mentioned was working was actually the cctv column um so that's actually working what we've done is we tried to put um a camera onto the cctv column and work with our street lighting team and, and other teams to try and get the electricity and the power to our camera. We were told that we would be able to do it, we should be able to do it, but when it came down to it, there wasn't an actual way of connecting the power source, which was very frustrating from my point of view. 
Um, on the second point uh, about the cameras, the cameras that um, I think you're talking about are for specifically for um, the school keep clears, but we've, um, so the, the zigzag lines outside schools. Um, so we've, we've spoken to the parking team and we've actually, um, we are going to repurpose those to, to, to use as part of our school street schemes. Unfortunately, um, we have you put a camera in that location, specifically one of these zigzag cameras, it's just that we haven't been able to, to get the power to it. So our next, our next steps are to look at other locations and, and other ideas to, to bring it forward. And um, I can't remember who mentioned it, but um, maybe potentially replacing lamp column one on North Parade, um, which has the uh, Christmas lights and the um, hanging baskets off it. So that would need to be fully replaced. Um, and you know, designed specifically to carry all of this stuff, um, but that's that's currently the process we're in at the minute. Mr. Rob, if you want to ask more questions, Sorry. you'll need to come forward. Sorry, Sorry. thank you. Okay. And Mr. Uh, Councillor McKinley. Um, forgive me if um, it's all in the report, which I've tried to study. A um, couple of things go through my mind. What are the penalties if somebody ignores it? And secondly, um, the way I understand it, when this is operational, a person driving from what I would call the railway station into uh, Chessington Parade, he or she does some business there, Sainsbury's chemist. They've basically, they've got to turn their vehicle around and come out the that the side they entered, yeah. No, you can come out of North Parade. You, you just can't go up Buckland Road, specifically. Right. It's just Buckland Road. Correct. Yes. Uh, forgive me. That's all right. Uh, I was a bit nervous. There was there was some penalty on on the Moorland. No, 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 no. Oh, it's right. just for people who go up Buckland Road. Eminently sensible. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, thank you, colleagues. There's so, always parking, Madam Chairperson, in Sopwith Avenue. I, you know, it, it, it's a, I never understood yellow lines, but this yellow line you can park on for, for an hour. Uh, and invariably, you know, you can park there. But imagine people don't know about it. Anyway, sorry. They now know about it. They know about it now, thank mm -hmm. you. If you'd like to turn your microphone off, thank yeah. you. Okay, so the recommendation on the agenda, um, the committee is asked to note that no, the number one, no formal representations or objections were received to the ETMO as set out in paragraph 25 of the report and resolve that uh, Buckland Road School Street experimental traffic management order be made permanent and the necessary statutory process to be undertaken to make the order permanent. And three, the initial zone operational times of 8 a.m. to 9.30 to 9.30 a.m. and 2 p.m. to 3.45 be changed to 8 a.m. to 9 a.m. and 2.30 p.m. to 3.30 p.m. The scheme be monitored with air quality data, school hands up and additional traffic data being collected and an update report to be brought to the committee for information in 12 months' time. I'll move that from the chair. Do I have a seconder, please? Yeah, Councillor Archer, thank you very much. Um, so, um, can I take that as unanimous, or does the committee wish to go to a vote? Agreed. It's agreed. agreed. Unanimous. That's lovely. Thank you very much. Um, so, thank you. So, that is agreed. Um, yeah, David, I was going to say if you wanted to go, and uh, also <laughs> Patrick, if you wanted to. Thank you very much for coming along this evening. Thank you. Go to item seven on the agenda um, on Appendix B, the Tree Maintenance Programme and Queen's Green Canopy. We've got Rob Waite. Thank you very much for coming along. It's been a long time since we've seen you in South of the Borough. So um, it goes swapping over. <laughs> it's lovely to see you, Rob. Thank you for visiting us. We haven't seen you for a while, so um, that's, that's very nice to see you. Um, so I'll pass over to you to present um, the item, the information item. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, Chair. Um, yeah, just to introduce myself to anyone I don't know, I'm Rob Way. I'm the um, Green Spaces Contract Manager for, for the Council. 
So I've brought some information here today about um, the borough's management of tree stock, tree planting, and then also some information about the, the Queen's green canopy. Um, so if I, if I start with the tree planting, so since the winter of 2018, um, the council has been planting in excess of 500 new semi-mature trees each winter. Um, the initial priorities were vacant tree pits where trees had previously been in place and had been taken out for whatever reason and not replanted. As we worked through that, then new locations became apparent on grass verges and planting in parks and open spaces. Um, there's also been, um, we've opened up uh, options for residents of the borough to, to request locations, whether that be in front of their properties or in parks and open spaces, we've taken that on board. So it's a sort of a bit of a meanwhile position because we've still got about six weeks of this last planting season. So these um, figures were from just before, before Christmas, but we've planted in, as I say, in excess of 2,000 trees across the whole borough now. There's a bit of a breakdown as to what that means to, to the neighbourhood in each particular ward, and also how we've been doing in terms of the establishment rate, um, any trees that have found to be dead and not established and anything that's been vandalised. So it's sort of recognised within, within the industry that when, when there's any new planting, there are various environmental factors which isn't going to allow 100% establishment and you can lose anything between 10 to 30% of, of, of stock. So we're actually doing pretty well on, on the whole in Kingston at about a 92% um, survival rate. You, you might see some anomalies, particularly in Chessington South, and that, that has been not helped by some, some vandalised trees which have, have knocked that down. Um, but trees as they're being planted, they are under sort of various stresses. It's not always the most hospi hospitable environment. So to try and give them enough time to bed in and whatnot, we, we have a, a watering programme. So via Bowser, we have approximately 20 watering visits for every um, new tree that's put in over a two year period after, after it's been planted. Um, and we're also encouraging residents now to help out where we can with every little help. So we've got little tree tags on any newly planted tree, so dish water, anything that can go down there, little and often, it really, really helps us out. Um, we're trying to make this as efficient as possible because at any given time we've got you know over a thousand trees that we're, we're trying to water. So we've actually taken out um, an extraction license now with Thames Water, so we can go to extraction points within the borough to fill the bowels up go quickly because previously the operatives were having to go back to their yard which was in um, which is in Ripley so it was losing a couple of hours a day so we, we've sort of been taking on board any um, issues we've, we've had with getting trees established and really trying to up that watering regime. So on to the just general um, inspection and maintenance of the tree stock and this is more our, our established tree stock so within Within the council, we, we work on a three-year three year cyclical schedule. So that means that every three years, the, the trees will be, every individual tree in, in the borough will be inspected by our qualified tree officer. The following year, works we programmed in as deemed appropriate, and then the cycle will start again. So what, what that means is we've got about 12,000 um, trees in public open spaces in the borough. So each year we do works to about 4,000 street trees. Um, as I say, we, we've got an incredibly qualified uh, tree officer that works for us in, in the borough, so she'll undertake the inspections based on industry standards and practices. Um, we only remove trees as part of our sick maintenance ex inspections if they are uh, seen to be dead or dangerous or dying. There are various other interventions that may come in outside of that, but in, in terms of our, our sick maintenance schedule, those, those are the reasons. There'll also be pruning that is required um, just to make sure that the trees can, um, you know, survive in the urban environment. There are some, you know, sometimes we need to maintain them so the trees don't go too big that can cause property to damage or the, or the surrounding areas. So there's, there's quite a lot that goes into it. Um, and again, with, within the information, there's, there's an example of how many trees are inspected in each of the wards within the neighbourhoods, how many trees were needing to be pruned and the amount of trees that within the last cycle were, were removed as, as a result of um, being found to be dead or diseased. So that's the, the general maintenance of our tree stock. I, I may just stop there for any questions before I go on to the, the Queen's, the, the Queen's Green Canopy. Thank you. So before we go over to the Queen's Canopy, has anyone got anything on that point? So uh, Councillor McKinley. Well, I want to thank Mr White and his colleagues for what they do. 
and do with great enthusiasm, uh, and I mean that. But I was a bit disappointed at the numbers, so this is a criticism of the council, what, what in, if you like, in the past we've allocated to this. I think we're low in ambition, frankly, in, in the terms of numbers this borough is planting each year. And it's against the backdrop of all the environmental case for more trees, uh, and we ought to be making a contribution. So I would like the South of the Borough Committee to nudge RBK, the full council, to take a step back and have a look and see if this should be a matter of priority and expenditure. And indeed, I imagine the expenditure primarily would be or in terms of staffing. I mean, I'm not blind to the fact that Mr. Wade and his colleagues can't work, work more, uh, so it's more folk they need. But it, it, it is low in, in ambition, in my view, particularly, as I say, against the backdrop of what we are all conscious of, the race against time to, uh, and every public body, large and small, to make the significant contribution to carbon uh, reductions and so on. And then looking at the tree planting, I mean, uh, I was Chessington South, I represent Chessington South, the colleagues here, so, but 103. Uh, Chessington South is a large area of the borough. It's at least a seventh of the borough. Uh, and um, it needs, in fact, uh, you know, I put a bit for my ward, it, it needs more. But I think all the three wards do. So I'm not wishing to sort of take away from their colleagues or people in North or in, in Hook Ward. It just it's disappointing. And um, uh, in, in a way, it trespasses upon me. We're coming onto the Queen's canopy, as it were, but if I could just develop my thought process, because probably Mr. Wake can contribute to this. Um, I know there are schemes, but I think the great majority of people in residence in RBK don't know there are schemes and initiatives whereby um, the uh, a voluntary society, a choir, a church, a scouts association, a football team can uh, go along and try and with, with the Woodland Trust, is it? You know, get get some. So, I, if nothing else, I think RBK ought to be with their communication system, making it much more uh, aware that th there are these schemes uh, whereby uh, people could, with the collaboration of RBK, uh, develop some, some uh, planting. And uh, I also think that we should be encouraging people who want to leave a memorial to a loved one. There should be places whereby they can contribute to a cluster and basically make an arboretum. I think that's the correct term. Uh, we should be thinking about a, a, um, a south of the borough or Kingston borough arboretum where people can dedicate trees to loved ones and, uh, and, and so on. Uh, and uh, it would fit in with the Queen's Jubilee canopy scheme. Um, so uh, I think that was really what I wanted. Ah, oh, there is one other thing, Madam Chairman. Um, I think we need to have an audit or a census of uh, our trees in the borough. And this may sound a, a tall order, but um, I certainly think that uh, there are some tree preservation orders which probably aren't policed. It's partly a question, but I fear that is so. Um, the there are many areas where there are land, uh, trees on private land uh, where there may be or may not be public access, because sometimes it, which we ought to be sort of uh, chronicling and uh, persuading landowners to not only enhance but uh, probably add to. Um, and so I think that. Uh, and um, well, the, the final thing was reverting to my idea of an arboretum, or arboretum, plural, in the borough, but we could have a south of the borough arboretum. I mean, f funny enough, some of us councillors just this week were looking at a piece of land off Clayton Road, uh, and it's in council ownership, and it's a beautiful meadow or piece of land. 
and whatever use it might be to, it seemed to me that would be a natural place for an arboretum, council, council owned, public access, and complementing whatever else might, that land might be used for. But, um, so I, I, I rest my point there. On the, the Jubilee uh, Queen's Canopy... Can we it, come back to that in a minute? When yes, well, I think all I was going to say, Chairperson, was that uh, we, we are late, but it's not over. And if we could exploit this initiative to commemorate Her Majesty's Jubilee, what a good idea, so we can get the next planting season. But it needs publicity, it needs pumping by our communications outfit. And a proper well, the scheme exists, I understand, but it should be sold to our communities and particularly to organisations who would love to make a contribution. Sorry to have gone on. Thank you. Well, firstly, thank you very much, Councillor. Did, Councillor Stewart. Actually, I'm on a very positive kick tonight. Um, Glendale are also offering trees to friends groups. Is that being included in your figures or is that over and above? They're not including these figures yet because these are what's in the ground. So as I say, we'll, we'll do a mop up at, at, at the end of the year. But yeah, there, there are, as, as well as what we're doing, there we've also got other bits of external funding. Um, it, it depends what they are. I think they're more likely to be the, the, the whips, the small whip planting. So we've slightly sidelined that because it's not the same as the planting of semi-mature trees. But yes, we are, we are tallying that up as well. And, for example, I know the Friends of Churchfields have, have, have benefited from this in the past with the Tree and Wood and Grant scheme. So we tally them up, but I think it would be a bit remiss of me to say that these are semi-mature trees that we could put towards our, our tally of planting. Certainly from our experience at Churchfields, a number of the whips we planted disappeared rather quickly. So we do understand, you know, the difference. Thank you. Councillor Cash. Thank you, Chair. Uh, yeah, following up from uh, Councillor Stewart again, uh, yeah, there, like like you mentioned or alluded to, uh, Rob Wade. Uh, so actually, we had a 2,000 target for the borrowed bonds. We planted the bigger ones, the more mature ones, and with all the bibs and saplings, I think uh, across the bar, we have many many active friends groups, and uh, our officers, you have helped a lot, and our contractors now, Glendale, previously, ID Verdi, have helped these friends groups. And again, there's another round where the friends, where at the moment, Glendale, like Councillor Stewart mentioned, made a bear friends groups that there are trees available helping them. So actually, we have done much more tree planting in supporting the friends groups. And then, no, yet, uh, I think in, in the autumn, correct me wrong if I'm, uh, yeah, correct me please if I'm wrong, Steffi had a meeting uh, with officers, with um, the, the, the uh, contractor and the friends groups to, to re or to install for the first time some sort of forum between the friends groups and our contractor and the borough in order to yeah, coordinate, uh, coordinate and maximize the efforts uh, for all the great work the friends groups are doing even more in the borough. So I'm really glad that we have done so much already and thanks to officers for all their support and help, and uh, that we are strive to do even more to engage and help and facilitate the friends groups. And on that note, uh, just a really short comment. Um, we had in this report the street trees, and unfortunately, south of the uh, we, 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 we lost a couple. Some have been vandalised. I just wanted to say in a couple of streets, which I saw with very much delight. Uh, residents have taken over, not like you suggested, were by the uh, helping with watering the trees and taking care of them, and they took care of the whole uh, bottom ground of the trees as well, planted some nice flowers, keeping them nice and tidy and doing really an uh, amazing job, uh, local residents, and keeping them really, really lovely, or the decorating the trees according to the season of the year. So I'm personally very pleased and just uh, wanted to mention that in the committee as well. Thanks. Thank you. Um, Rob, did you want to come back on any of those points before I go to Mr. Rob? Too many Robs. <laughs> Sorry, I'll cover the maybe when I do come on to the, okay, the lovely, Queensland Thank you. Mr. Rob, would you like to come forward? Can I just look like you're the co contractor, yes? 
No, I, I work for RBK. Oh, that's okay. Fine, thank you. Um, um, f first of all, I've got to say, I mean, um, the trees make a t total difference to our roads. I'm, we're lucky. We've got grass verge, and I, I've got a tree outside my place. But I've got to say, um, your report doesn't um, marry up with reality, because uh, I've had to look after my tree. I've watered it. Um, people think um, I'm doing something rude, because I'm standing out there in the road and water going into the tube, you know. But, but the thing is, um, if I hadn't looked after my tree, it would be, de be dead by now. The contractor is rubbish. Um, they put a new tree in, and the reinstatement to the actual grass verge, um, I've had to do it myself, because, it, because you couldn't mow, we mow our own verges as well. I couldn't mow the verge after they'd been there, because it was just a pile of stones and everything else. Also, the new tree they've just put in, it's gone to, is it is the word pollard? It's gone to a pollard shape. It's growing from the, um, am I allowed to actually prune that so it goes back to a standard? Because I'm, I'm how, how long ago was this um, planted? Last year. Last year? Yeah. Uh, and as I say, um, it needs pruning because, uh, you know, otherwise it's, 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 it's sprouting from the bottom. Um, also, uh, we were told, um, if I can make a note for uh, my neighbour across at number 15 Bolton Road, uh, Chessington, um, the tree outside his place is dying, and we, and we were told uh, he's got to wait because the, you're going to do this audit on the, on the trees, which um, I hope now you've done. Hopefully um, you can look at uh, replacing the tree out, outside his, um, his house. Um, but that audit, did it actually look at the condition of the trees, etc., and will there be an automatic replacement of where the trees have died or are missing? And my last bit is, and, and you know it's a favourite of mine, you come down Bridge Road from Bridge Road Roundabout, and it, there's, there's two sort of uh, t types of society. From the bridge road roundabout to this, the uh, railway bridge, we've got trees. You, you, come south the, you come past the railway bridge down here, the, why, why haven't they got trees? It, it, there's, no, there's no trees in, in, in the central island. You know, it, it seems that uh, it's a difference, you know. To, but as I say, the trees are fantastic and we need to plant more. But I, I would question um, the quality of your uh, contractor. Okay, thank you. Well, I, I can certainly take that away and, and look into it. Um, in terms of Bridge Road, the centre again, the centre reservation is a prime example of where it's not a particularly hospitable environment, and we've had real struggles to get those established. Off the top of my head, I quite, can't quite see what's on that, that south side where there are no trees. How could whether there is even space for a, for a planting pit? But Yeah, there's no currently, I don't think there's any tree pits out there, but um, we can certainly have a look. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Rob. Okay, do you want to carry on? Yes, thank you. Um, yeah, so we, we touched it quite a bit already, but then just some information about the Queen's Green Canopy. So this is a um, tree planting initiative which is created to mark Her Majesty's Platinum Jubilee in 2022. So it does invite people to plant a, a tree for the Jubilee and it's um, an inclusive national um, campaign, so it, individuals, local authorities, uh, community groups, schools, any, anyone can, can do this and, and dedicate a, a tree. Um, I think there are probably two aspects to it, and there's, there's a certain amount that, that we can do to, to facilitate through our Friends Forum and to be able to direct those established groups towards where the funding is and what we can do to physically help the planting. And as Councillor McKinley also said, that then there is pure comms piece about getting this, this out and that's probably where I need to split my team out and, and focus on, on those on those two things but yeah it's very much the um, intention that we will be pushing through our, our friends groups um, I mean I, I would love it if we can get where we've got a constituted friends group in every single park at least one tree dedicated to the Queen's green canopy um, either retrospectively or we've got the, the upcoming um, planter season. The other thing I was going to say is we, we still do have a bit of surplus stock so I'd be more than happy to get the ball rolling. If, if the neighbourhood had a, a, a sort of a prime location, we can probably get something in the ground within the next month or so um, dedicated from, from, from the neighbourhood and, and get that going so that, that can act as a sort of bit of a, a focal point. Um, Councillor Archer has already done one for maybe slightly different purposes but we, but we have got that. But yeah, we, we certainly got a bit of surplus stock so if, if you had a, a location in mind 
um, we, we can do that and dedicate it now. Thank you very much. I think we'll all have a conversation and, um, and uh, come up. I'm sure we'll be able to find some places. Um, Councillor Archer. Yes, I'll just reiterate that. And Andrew, I know you've come up with, you feel that there's sort of gaps or places where trees could be planted. So please feed that in because, um, yeah, just we know our area is the best and we can just direct um, yeah, the tree planting regime to where it needs to go. So please feed in what you've been suggesting tonight. Thanks. Thank you. Can you put your microphone on? Sorry, Councillor. Sorry, I, I, I don't want to appear like a long playing gramophone record. First of all, the answer is yes to Stephanie's point. But the communications outfit of Kingston Council need to tell folk and organisations and we can't leave that just to Mr. Waite. Indeed, it's its core job for the communications people. I think it should be a priority. And um, as I say, I, I would hope that it, before we conclude tonight, we also at least flag up with further, for further discussions with officers and uh, his, uh, Mr. Waite's colleague who deals with the environment, Mr. Um, uh, um, no, the, the gentleman who does the wildlife, the flora and fauna. Elliot, yeah, yeah. Um, whether or not we can have some, particularly using new technology, modern technology, have some audit of where there are copses, I think, uh, and tree clusters of trees, and to some extent there is rewilding going on, consciously and unconsciously, and we ought to exploit the rewilding so that trees are, are allowed to develop again on public and private land. So I'm sorry to have a second bite of the cherry, but I do think communications, but also there ought to be a, a start of trying to get a census of what, what exists, and particularly where there's a cluster of trees. Yes, yeah, so, so, so we, we, do, we have that to, to agree. So as I say, we, we use a, an asset management system called Ar Arbitrack. So when the, these surveys are being carried out, um, they are inputted in, into a, a system which then has full inspection history, works on it and it, it's, it's essentially on a GIS map so you, you can plot all of those. So that, that is easy on individual trees and streets. As, as you mentioned, sometimes in parks and open spaces there are clusters or woodlands and with the greatest wood in the world we can't identify so they are grouped as a, a group of, of trees. But on, on public open space, so that's the, the parks and open spaces and the highways, we essentially do have that. You, you've already mentioned there's probably a lot of other scope, particularly within in this um, neighbourhood where there's private um, open space which, which really could be benefit so we, we, we don't have that currently that, that maybe gets in and also you mentioned about TPOs which is a, a planning function so again it's maybe where the things slightly branch off that we're dealing with the operational aspects of public open land and then what's going on on private land is slightly over here but um, yeah to answer your question so we're, we're a long way along in terms of knowing what our assets are and, and, and what, what we're dealing with in there. Thank you. Does anyone else have any comments or questions? Okay, lovely. Thank you very much, Rob, for coming <coughs> along. Um, we will get back to you very shortly um, with a list of, um, of uh, usage for any saplings that are going along. Um, you will be in touch. Lovely. Very we, we probably want to look to get in the ground within the next four to six weeks. We'll be quick. Don't Thank worry. You. Thank you. <coughs> Okay, so we'll move on to item eight on the agenda, and it's the community manager's report. Um, so I will pass over to Richard. Thank you very much, Richard. Thank you, Chair. I'm very grateful. Um, a number of sort of consultation items on the report this week, and I'm always conscious when I go through and I, I start rattling a load of email addresses. So for those in the public gallery and uh, that haven't got access this evening to to IT-based stuff, I have actually printed out a little bit of paper with some email addresses on it, because I don't expect you to remember all 15 of them I'm going to go through. So, um, the first consultation is from our colleagues at the South West London Clinical Commissioning Group, and they are doing work via Health Watch Kingston and Kingston Voluntary Action to better understand the needs and impacts of uh, people who unfortunately suffer bereavement. 
um, the engagement is about what a bereavement support service looks like within our community and how networks can be better placed to um, support people who suffer bereavement. Obviously, it's been focused during COVID-19, but it's for every sort of bereavement um, a sudden death. So that's a survey, as I say, from the South West London Clinical Commissioning Group, and that's a, a survey monkey um, with a few forward slashes and bereavement Kingston. But as I say, the, the addresses will be available online and, and also via the bit of paper. And something I didn't know, actually, when I sent uh, circulation out to community members is that there is a, a bereavement cafe at the King Centre now. Um, they've set up uh, to help and just chat through and, and, and actually open their doors for these discussions on the first Saturday of each month uh, between 10 and 11.30. So if we can spread the word there, there is an email address which is bereavement.cafe at the King's Centre.org.uk and as I say, it's on the list, but it's uh, a very good and local service. So I was glad to find out about that. Um, Madam Chair, on a, on a somewhat sadder note, um, a link to bereavement, uh, I was in possession of very sad news earlier this week that um, the Fulham Foundation Youth and Community Manager, Mr Paul Smithers, uh, sadly died on the 5th of January. We may remember that um, Paul successfully applied recently for a, a, a neighbourhood community grant. In fact, it was at the September meeting to enable the uh, KICKS project from the Fulham Foundation to operate in Chessington School. Um, from a personal point of view, I, I was very fortunate through two, two careers, one, one longer and uh, the other, to, to, work with, to work with Paul on a number of occasions and his ambition and dedication to develop projects and, and just look after uh, the, the children you use in, the, in those projects was absolutely phenomenal. Um, Paul leaves a, a young family, as you would expect, because he's a young man. I think, he was, um, I think I'm right in saying he was 31. Um, Fulham Football Club themselves have set up a dedicated Just Giving page, so I would urge anyone interested, there's a Just Giving page that can be accessed via the Fulham Football Club website. So a little bit of sad news there for the meeting. Moving on to uh, more local um, consultations, um, there's three that I'd like to just briefly talk over that are accessible via the Kingston Let's Talk portal. And the first one is a community safety survey being undertaken on behalf of the Safer Kingston Partnership, which, uh, for those who aren't aware, uh, is a multi-agency group that includes the police, Kingston Council, probation service, fire brigade, and many others, set up as part of the Crime and Disorder Act, um, legally, for, legally um, brought together to look at how communities can be safer places. Um, they're now compiling the evidence for their priorities and reports, um, report on the priorities, beg your pardon, for 2022-23, and are keen to gather feedback from residents, businesses, and community groups about safety issues affecting them. And I'd certainly uh, be very keen on uh, encouraging people from south of the borough to complete that. And again, that's through the, the Kingston Let's Talk portal, uh, and just look for the Community Safety Survey tab on that. Uh, the next one, uh, and linked very nicely actually to our, our, our first and, and thank goodness uh, neighbourhood SIL application that was successful earlier on, is a consultation on the Community Parks Programme. Uh, and as we heard, um, there's ongoing work to enhance green spaces. Overall, RBK are investing something at like £1.3 million pounds, uh, and Woodview in Malden, Russia is uh, one of those locations that's been chosen for redevelopment over and above uh, that of the SIL application this evening. So again, I'd urge um, anyone to go on the site, again, uh, Let's Talk Portal and Parks Programme, and you can give your feedback on that, or indeed any other of the parks that are um, up for, uh, for renewal. Um, uh, I, 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 I sort of smile slightly because we've had the conversation already, but the, the third one I mentioned is, of course, the Tolworth Road low traffic neighbourhood, as uh, both Ian and I alluded to um, during discussion and during the questions. There is the, the feedback process via the Let's Talk portal uh, on the low traffic neighbourhoods tab, and I would urge anybody who's got any views for or against um, to air their views before the consultation closes fully on the 12th of June. 
briefly, it's that time of year again where we look at the Mayor's Award. So if you think that there's anyone who's made a real positive difference to Kingston, then we ask you to go on the website and uh, nominate. It's a very simple form. I was just practicing earlier. It's in it on a few tabs on a Google form. Um, if you don't want to do the submission yourself, I'm quite happy to receive nominations via my email address to, um, to, to pass on to the Mayor's office. There are a few, as there are because it's a council, there's a few rules and regs about this. And um, the, the first one is that it cannot be a council employee as it stands at the moment to receive the award. Although I have asked if, um, if, if this can be changed over a period of time, because unfortunately Ian and I aren't able to nominate each other again this year. So um, uh, there's, there, there will be a separate uh, award, and the Mayor's very keen for a separate award for young people this year, so that's very good. And all good news, and as I say, that's, um, that's on the uh, RBK website. So the last item, you'll be, you'll be pleased to know, the last item for me is around council award funding, uh, and for once, members not a chastisement on using funds but rather a demonstration of how well used the funds have been over the last 12 months. Uh, we'll recollect hopefully that um, I provided an update on the South of Borough neighbourhood grants at the last meeting therefore I thought it was only useful to allow everyone to have an idea and know of some of the projects that um, Council Award funding has supported over the last uh, 12 months. Apologies if, if I don't mention every um, project because they, they are numerous, but I hope the dem to demonstrate the, the depth and breadth of support for projects uh, across the neighbourhood. So firstly, and, and uh, I, I wouldn't necessarily expect people to, to know the, the first two, I suppose, because I certainly wouldn't if I was in the job, but um, hanging baskets and planters for Chessington South without council award funding this just doesn't happen. There's no budget within the council that permits or supports. So um, all the hanging baskets you see around the whole borough, with the exception of those paid for by businesses in Kingston Town, are provided by council award funding, and, and that's the case in South of the Borough as well, with the planters and hanging baskets. Support has been given as partial funding for the for the festive trees and decorations again that we had this year. Again, just, just, just to point out the, the obvious, as we know, but without ward funding, that just doesn't happen. And certainly without the, um, without the efforts of, of councillors and, and those physical efforts for, for, for councillor Stewart, some of the, some of the um, decorations on the roundabout at, uh, down the road here it just wouldn't happen. And it's a real pity we can never, because of what they're like, we can really, never really get a good picture to demonstrate how good they are. But I know they're... they're Comment, they get a few lots and lots of positive comments. Numerous community cleanups, and we've had grant applications as well. Um, community events, where, when we can have them. We, there was a September event at the Hook Centre, of course, and there was going to be a Christmas one linked to um, linked, linked to uh, the Christmas trees, but uh, other matters came to the fore. But this is again just a demonstration of support for local groups. Uh, money and, and funds put into community groups uh, have allowed the promotion of the great outdoors in South of the Borough, footpaths, bridleways, local walking maps, and enhancements to Tolworth Court Farm, to name a few. Helping charities to address food poverty across the neighbourhood, and we, we go back to Brightbox and the, the work done from Voices at Hope there. Um, supporting local charities, and, I, and I've picked out Yorda Adventures uh, as an amazing charity that continue to provide help and support uh, for children and young people with significant learning and uh, complex disabilities and their families. Uh, again, without the, the ward funding support, they wouldn't be able to help as many people as they do. Uh, and, and lastly, and I think it probably a real favourite for everyone really, and just coming to fruition, is the, the money that's been set aside to provide a bench and plaque to be placed in King Edwards in recognition of uh, the contribution made uh, by South of the Borough key workers, volunteers and residents during the COVID pandemic. And we're expecting to see that in place in the next few weeks. Thank you. It's amazing actually how, how many um, uh, groups and uh, how many projects we managed to complete with with so little really, but we do. So thank you very much for that reminder. Um, and um, it's very sad news about Paul Smithers um, having only been with us in September at committee. Um, so if there is any way of being able to pass on condolences from the, the from South of the Borough neighbourhood, then we would like 
happy to do that. That would be great. Certainly will do. Thank you. Does anyone have any questions or comments? Yes, Councillor McKinley. Well, it might be a matter for Mr Dean or for his colleague, but uh, the, the minutes of the last meeting noted the comments in relation to the possible cycling improvements along Fair Oak Lane and Rushett Lane. And in regards to cycling improvements along the A243, and it was minuted, officers will continue to lobby TfL. And the minute further goes on that um, we raised the disappointment at the previous meeting that, T, uh, that TfL was again not present at the meeting. Um, really, I, I really want to sort of ask two things. Any more news on the Rushett Lane, uh, Fair Oak Lane speed business? The, the question of cycling on the A243 and those roads I've just referred to, and separately, as it were, is it impossible to get the TfL person down here? Uh, because there, what, there's so much of our business is TfL, and indeed some of our guests earlier, they could have responded or TfL could have heard. And, you know, I don't want to be unkind, but I don't think it's good enough, you know, and TfL should be told it's not good enough. And if they, you know, ignore us, then we ought to be kicking up rough with TfL or even the London, London Mayor. Thank you, Councillor. I will, if we don't mind, I'll put that to the information item of the traffic update um, with Ian at the well, end, fine, yeah, um, yeah. rather than the neighbour. Sorry, yeah, I wasn't sure. Thank you, because I can guarantee Richard has no idea. No, no, no. no. Um, sorry. So <laughs> sorry to piggyback on the report. That's okay. Can I, has anyone else got any questions at all for Richard at this point? Oh, okay, lovely. Got away, got free. Thank you very much. Thank you. Um, so we'll move on to item nine on the agenda, um, which we brought as an emergency, as an urgent item, um, authorised by myself. Um, and that's with regards to the objection to a disabled bay in Garrison Lane. Um, so I'll move, um, move on to, um, over to Ian, if that's okay to present, um, by way of introduction. Thank you. Thank you, Chair. Uh, so the report in front of you considers an objection received during the statutory process for a disabled bay in Garrison Lane. Well, firstly, I'd just like the opportunity to apologise that this report is being tabled as urgent material, but in order to manage what was considered an urgent request, the bay markings had already been introduced on an informal basis in Garrison Lane before Christmas 2021, and the intention originally had been to, to actually deal with the objections um, at the March committee. However, on reflection, it was considered that we should deal with this as soon uh, as soon as possible, just to, to, to get the bay markings um, so that they were enforceable and that they could be used without any any concern. <clears throat> the um, the objection raised um, a number of issues, and they're set out in paragraphs three to seven. Um, and I'll just run through the points that the objector makes. So it, it mentions that the bay size is much larger than a standard car size. Um, and I would just ad advise that that's correct and that's what the bay size needs to be. We've got standard designs um, that we must adhere to in terms of um, disabled bay parking on the public highway. Um, and the, the report sets out what they need to be. Um, so, so that's what we need to work with um, and, and that's what the, the bay sizes need to be. Um, it goes on to, to question um, where the application has come from um, and I can advise that the application uh, has been processed and considered uh, as fully as it can be um, by the appropriate department who, who deal with disabled bay applications. Um, and it was deemed that it met all the appropriate criteria uh, for being considered uh, as a disabled bay. It asks if the bay uh, is being provided to meet any commuter parking needs. Um, I'll confirm that it's not, um, so it's for a local person. Um, and finally, it notes that the disabled bay will result in the loss of parking spaces uh, in the area. Um, and whilst I think you know, we have to accept that that is the case, um, it's considered that the need of, of the person who will be using the disabled bay outweighs the, 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 the loss of 
a space and a half for, for people who are more able-bodied and more able to, to get to and from their properties by parking somewhere else. Um, so it's on that basis we are suggesting, or sorry, we are recommending that the objections are set aside and that we make the um, disabled bay TMO permanent. Thank you, Ian. Um, does anyone have any questions or comments at all? Councillor Stewart. Um, obviously, I, I know a fair amount about blue badge parking, as you know, Ian. And I'm not sure that this resident may be aware that a blue badge space is not, al well, it is allocated to a person who has applied, well, it is the person who has applied who is successful in getting the Blue Badge Bay, but actually it's not reserved for that person. So it can actually be used by any Blue Badge owner if it's not being used. Now, a considerable number of wheelchair users have what are called wheelchair accessible vehicles, which are considerably longer than the average. And I would say that a Blue Badge space has to be able to accommodate such a vehicle. Now that can be as big as a Renault traffic because I've owned a Renault traffic as a motor mobility vehicle. I did go online to see if I could get an average size for a motor mobility vehicle because I think it'd be considerably longer. But obviously if you've got a wheelchair going in, then you also have to have the ramp and that has to be able to fit in. So I think if the resident could be told that it's actually used for any blue badge holder, and should accommodate WAVs, it might be helpful in them understanding the need for the greater length. Thank you. Yeah, I'll make sure that we, we include references to that in our response to the objector, if that's okay, Chair. Thank you, Ian. Anyone else got any comments? Okay, thank you very much. Um, so, um, there's a recommendation on the agenda. The, company, the committee is asked to resolve that the comments and objections received are set out in paragraphs 3 to 7 and officer comments in paragraphs 8 to 11 be noted. The objection received on the Garrison Lane application to be set aside and the implementation of the TMO for the, for the introduction of the new disabled bay, Garrison Lane, be approved. And objectors and applicants are informed of the committee's decisions. I will move that from the chair. Do I have a seconder, please? Councillor Stewart, thank you. Um, can I take that as a unanimous, or does the committee wish to go to a vote? Agreed. 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 Lovely. Thank you very much. Um, so that's, um, that's been approved. So we'll go on to item 10 on the agenda, information items. There's a written update on the Tolworth Road um, LTN um, been circulated to members um, of the committee via email and there are copies here as well um, and if I go to I'm on here but the traffic update um, and ask for any um, response to Councillor McKinley if possible and if anyone else has got any questions at all Ian <coughs> Yeah so um, whilst um, we produced this, this earlier in the day. Um, we have since had some, some data back, which is just in terms of the current level of responses to Tolworth Road. Um, so that wasn't included in this update, but I, I just thought I'd give you some, some verbal feedback on that. So um, as things stand at the moment, we've had 451 uh, responses to the ETMO at the moment, sorry, the experimental traffic order. Um, of, of which currently 61% um, are saying they are very unhappy and 28% are saying they're very happy. So just in terms of, of having a feel. What I've asked our comms team to do is, is to try and plot that on a map so we can have an understanding of, of, of where the people who are very unhappy are and um, where the people who are happy are. I think we probably have a... a a, a good indication, but it, you know, if we've got the postcode data and stuff to help us plot that, um, but that's the sort of data I would look to be bring along to the uh, monitoring meeting that we're having with with the sort of Surbiton and um, South of the Borough councillors. So I just thought that might be a useful addition to, to provide that for you. Um, in, in terms of uh, TFL's attendance at this meeting, as, as far as I understand, they are still um, not 
working, um, sorry, they're still working remotely. So, so the, the, and, I, and I know we had the conversation with them last time that said, well, you were happy to attend site meetings, but you won't come to, to a, a committee meeting. Um, but as, you know, they, they were, they were steadfast in their defence to say that, you know, they're, they're not going to public meetings across London. It's not just us, you know, that, that's the case for their staff at the moment. So, um, you, you know, with the changes that are happening, there, there's no reason that we can't expect them to maybe come to the March committee. And I'm more than happy to put that request in writing to them uh, in the morning. Um, I had a, uh, as I said, I had a, a catch-up meeting with them earlier today, um, and um, we we didn't talk about any of the issues that were raised here. Um, but um, I, I did take the opportunity to talk to them and just give them some feedback and, and update on the Tolworth Road scheme because it's a TfL-funded scheme, and I just wanted them to be aware of the uh, the current situation. Um, with it being in on the ground and it being quite lively in terms of comms. Um, so they've asked to be kept informed of, of that, um, which I'll continue to do. Um, <clears throat> the cycling on the A243 um, is something we haven't had any feedback on at present from TfL. Um, and again, I'm happy to, to chase on that. Um, it, it is their network and I know it's you know, the most direct route to get people to, to where we want to go in terms of if, if you're a cyclist. Um, <clears throat> I would imagine, if, if I were TfL, that they would be saying it's also an incredibly busy A route that, that you know, serves a strategic purpose um, in being that, that A, a road. Um, so, we'll, we'll, you know, as I'm happy to follow up with them, but we'll see what they say. Um, and, and apologies if, um, if I've... Um, not picked up on the, the cycling issues along Fair Oak and Rushit Lane. Uh, I'll have to take that away and, and come back to you, Councillor McKinley. The speed-related um, issues on the, the other south of the borough roads, um, we are in the process of, of getting that traffic management order ready to go out to publication, uh, probably in the early part of February now. Um, but we're still anticipating that we'll be able to get that in place by the end of this financial year. Thank you for that, uh, and uh, if we can pursue longer lines as, as you've outlined, that would be excellent. And, you know, if we can keep the pressure on, I, there's no other word for it, on TfL, and, and hopefully they'll be invited to, and will attend our next meeting, please. So, um, the uh, just uh, if they were here, and another matter which... I think we should all be conscious of is that we're a border borough with Surrey and the, and the other region. Uh, of, uh, and it looks like Sadiq Khan is going to introduce, extend the various zones out to the borough boundary or to the M25. I, I welcome that environmentally, but to, to suggest there aren't ramifications for commerce for retail, for the mobility of people coming in and out of our borough is to deny reality. And uh, it does seem to me, both looking ahead to our next meeting, but generally this South of the Borough Committee need to flag it up with RBK, that um, we ought to be addressing some of the potential consequences if, if we wake up one morning and find arbitrarily the GLA, TfL or the London Mayor are really pursuing uh, taking the, the, the various zones, I forget the correct term, but the, the zone uh, which uh, starts at Wandsworth out to, out to uh, south of the borough. Uh, so uh, I wanted to flag that up as well, both specifically tonight, but also if we had access to, to uh, TfL person. Yeah, it would be very interesting for them to respond and, and to have a, a feeling of our concern. We need reassurance on behalf of our constituents, I think. The final, final thing, colleagues, is 
I thought I had raised this, and I'm over to correction, I'm told I didn't. The, the, the increased number of Ocado and Waitrose lobby, uh, lorries using the um, A243, it, it's, um, it's been raised with me by constituents, uh, as well as noticing myself. Now, I'm, I'm not sure there's much we can do about it, but I, th I, I thought it had been flagged up. Uh, if we could have had a report back on the... the uh, there must be a distribution centre for, for the wholesalers in this area, and I suspect it's because they probably cannot negotiate under Tolworth Railway Bridge, or it might be something like that, but they're using the A243, and it's punishing the highway and the carriageway and the road surface. The, the volume of these lorries is immense. So if I could leave that there, I'd be grateful. Yes, I did feed that back to Ian, who's going to take it up with TfL. Um, they are extremely large lorries, and they just about get round the Ace of Space roundabout to get onto the A3 to go northbound. And I know I've several times nearly been taken out by one on the Ace of Space where they try to get out before I do. Um, so I know that Ian, I don't know if you've but you have written to, to TfL to ask them for their, their comments on that, I guess. Um, not yet, I haven't, no, but um, I, I, w I will do so. Um, but, you know, I would go back to the, to the, the point raised previously. You know, the, the A243 is a strategic route, um, if, and TfL may say that's where they would expect to see that traffic. Um, you know, if we've got, got concerns about road condition and the damage that the weight and the size of the vehicles is doing then that, that's a, a, a real um, reason to be flagging up the concerns uh, and maybe asking them to look at the, the numbers to, to make sure that the road is fit for purpose um, but I think in terms of the, the traffic itself I would expect them to say it's probably on the right road um, but yeah it, it, it just seems odd that if it's suddenly increasing there, there should be a reason for it that we should uh, be able to be aware of in there. Thank you. Ian, Councillor Archer, did you want to come in? Oh, yeah, I was just going to come back on the um, cycle routes. So it's very much on the agenda, mm -hmm. and obviously, you know, we put in the LIP bid, um, which included some feasibility studies into taking the cycle routes out, um, just to look at, you know, where that would be possible. Obviously, we know that the funding from TfL at the moment is stalled, because of negotiations with TfL and the DFT. So it's just something to be aware of. Um, it, the whole process on the LIP funding go cycle is currently stalled, um, which is really unfortunate, but that is where we are. Um, but we're waiting on the, uh, a negotiated settlement from the 4th of February, which is soon. Anyone else got any questions at all? Okay, lovely. Thank you very much, colleagues. So, um, thank you to those here tonight and those watching on the online stream or tomorrow's archived one. Um, I will now close the meeting at 9.28. Thank you very much. Yeah.